Have any of y'all here ever seen Roy Orbison perform live? Okay. Outside the, well, I was due for a period of time, but certainly Buddy and I would not be here today if not for Roy Orbison, wouldn't you agree? You too, JR, to some extent, right? Um, any man were an offshoot of Roy Orbison's man. Well, how we were Roy Orbison's man. But if you ever saw Roy work, he would tell these awful God corny jokes. He'd stand up there and he had a very distinct way of talking. So we'd play a song or two and then he'd decide to talk to the audience. He'd say, uh, thank you all so much for coming out here tonight. We just flew in today and my arms are still tired. <laughs> you know, and we don't, <laughs> that's really funny. Then he'd tell another, swing another song and he'd go, Thank you all for coming out here today. You know, I hope you all don't mind. I've got a, a frog in my throat. In fact, it's the best meal I've had in about a week. <laughs> and he said another thing. We had a bass player, player who was just the sweetest guy in the world. His name was Bill Gilmore. And he would say, um, <laughs> he would say, uh, well, we just found out today that our bass player's wife just presented with a proud bouncing baby boy, and we'd like the proud father to please take a bow, and we would all stand up and take a bow. <laughs> the other joke was, uh, you know, normally I have a bigger band, but uh, as we crossed the state line today, we had a fruit inspection, he's the only fellow that made it. <laughs> well, one day we're playing in Atlanta, and after about a year and a half, we're so tired of these same jokes every night. And we used to play before Roy came on. So one night, I look at the rest of the guys, I say, I'm going to set a precedent here tonight. So we're getting ready to do our set, and I tell everyone his jokes before he comes out. Yeah, boy. So he comes out and he says, I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight. I just flew in, my arm's still tired. It was like Mount Rushmore out there. I mean, not one sound. <laughs> well, you got a mic already. But the Orbison stories are particularly dear to me because he was such an innocent soul and you could do stuff to him and he had a great laugh. It was he transcended laughter. He would cackle. I mean, it sounded like a crazy hen. And um, the first time we went on tour in England, Graham Nash tells us, he says, well, you know, the last night of the tour, it's traditional to do some sort of outlandish thing to make the tour event uh, more eventful. We went, really? He says, really, what do you do? He says, like one year we had like flour up in the rafters and this, the headline was saying we opened a flower and got all covered with flour and came out all white. We went, well, that's a little extreme. So we said, I know what we're going to do. You know, Orbison sang these songs with pretty high notes in them. So we decided, oh, he said, we didn't have electric tuners in those days. We used to tune up his guitar form backstage. So we tuned it up a step higher. <laughs> the first song that we did was always Only the Lonely. No way. And the second one, dum 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 dee doo wah, sons of bitches. <laughs> he knew right away from doing that song and that came for so many years. He cusses, and I gotta tell you, I don't know how he did it, man. We saw the veins. You can see it properly. He made it through the entire show, man. But that was a that was a beautiful thing. 